Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Today is November 29th, 2017. Absolutely wonderful day here in Los Angeles. A little bit chilly. It was cold last night. It was like in the 40s, 50s. I was, I was freezing. Um, but you know what? It reminds you to really appreciate when it is warm outside. Hopefully, it'll be warming up here. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Lots to discuss as per usual. You know, I want to go over a few things that I think are very important to talk about. And that is, you know, recently, I think throughout almost every area of work from entertainment to journalism to um, law to politics, you know, there's been this really extraordinary, what I call floodgate of people talking about their stories of being sexually violated, uh, sexually harassed, even raped, molested, just horrible, horrible. So I want to say to all the women and men who have been um, inappropriately from being harassed to touch, to hurt, molested, sexually abused, um, our hearts really go out to you here on the Dr. Levi Show because no one has the right to touch or say anything to any woman or man that, that's inappropriate. You don't have the right. So the, the, the issue that, I, that I, I think is happening is that many people have had these things happen a long time ago and just did not have the inner power to come forth. So I really salute everyone who comes forth right now telling their stories. You know, the hashtag Me Too, I think it's really phenomenal, whereby people can really express what has happened to them. And I think it's incumbent upon us to listen and to believe them. Now, with that said, yes, there should always be due diligence and due process whereby we really find all the facts, you know, to make sure everything is substantiated. However, people who commit these predatory actions, they have to pay the price for that. And if that means losing their jobs, if that means losing their livelihood, then, you know, we have to really say, well, that's what it takes. We have to have a change in the understanding, the consciousness about how sexual predation affects the lives of people. You know, when you're working with someone, you feel like they have power over you, and you feel like if you don't do or, or, or let them touch you the way they want to touch you, then it may mean losing your job or your livelihood. Many people do that, and it's really unfortunate. So I want to say here on this show today, I want to be really clear, that I think it's important that we really encourage people to tell their truths, I think it's very important that we stand on a platform of understanding that people tell their stories when they're ready. And we simply have to listen with a heartfelt ear and an open heart and understand that everyone who's gone through this type of, of horribleness, we should embrace them and help them to heal and not point a finger of judgment or not make them feel like they're less than or that what they're saying should not be um, appreciated, really. You know, I appreciate their courage, their truth. So with that said, uh, I say we should all go forth and just tell our stories, let them be true. Um, you know, I've talked about before when I, when I, when I came to L.A., I, I, uh, I, I did a, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this again, but I, I talked about before, I did an underwear commercial campaign that I went out for, and I was in the, the final three for that, and uh, and at the end, you know, I was, you know, really touched inappropriately, and uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. It was, it, there was nothing good about it, and I didn't do the campaign, but I, was, I, I felt fortunate to be in, the, you know, the final three, and I've never forgotten that, and I, I think we talked about it once before, um, so I... I, I, I think it's important that we listen. That's what I think is important, period. All right, so I just wanted to talk about that. And uh, I know that's a kind of a somber way to, to bring in the show, but it's the truth. You know, life is life. Life is kinetic. There are ups and there are some downs, so we have to talk about them all. Um, but I, I salute the power and bravery of everyone who comes forth to tell their truth and to tell their story. All right. Now, with that said, um, I want I wanted to talk to you about a medical moment that I think has a, 
a, a lot of a lot of increased attention now, and that's about scarlatina, also called scarlet fever, which is actually a disease that people can get, or it's really just a bacterial infection from uh, from streptococcus. Now, the great thing about it, it can be treated with antibiotics. The, the bad thing is that there's like a surge of it right now in Europe and Asia, and we don't really know why this is going on. And it can be spread by coughing or by sneezing, you know, those droplets. It can live, actually, the, the bacteria, scarlet fever, can live on doorknobs, on utensils. And this can happen for hours. So it's so important that, you know, you wash your hands, you wash the hands of your children, that you, you really are conscious of this. Now, as I said earlier, it, it's important that we really kind of step back and don't get scared about anything because it can be treated, thank goodness with antibiotics. Now, the other thing is about the presentation. It can be someone coughing, sneezing, having a really bad sore throat. You know, if you look at their tongue, they get something called the strawberry tongue that may also have a lot of uh, white discharge around their, 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 their tongue. Um, pain in their, in their throat. They may have really, you know, really bad breath, you know, I mean, really malodorous breath, and of course, because of the, the infection that's there. Um, pain in their, their throat, in lymph nodes. Um, they may have what's called a, a raised rash on, on their body, um, especially in the, on, on their arms and their armpits, even their knees. It can be really everywhere. Um, however, it's mainly seen in children under 10 years of age. So I've never seen it in, in someone older. Now, I'll tell you this. When I was, when I was younger, um, much younger, I should say, I remember one of my really good friends, uh, Bridget, her sister uh, actually had scarlet fever. And this is when I was in New Orleans. I'm, I've never forgotten that because I thought, wow, scarlet fever as a kid. And now I'm at 35 plus, 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 plus. Um, I, uh, you know, reading about and hearing about scarlet fever now, it's like, uh, it's just unbelievable that, that there's, there's having, there, there, there is a, a re-immersion, uh, I should say, of, uh, of this. Uh, so, but it can be treated, and I'm sure it will be. Now, with that said, let's let's talk about something I think is is really good, and that is how what can you do to to really increase the amount of joy in your life. Let's talk about joy today. One of my favorite words, you know, my favorite favorite word, of course, is gratitude. But let's talk about joy. So. When it comes to joy, I think joy is one of these things very similar to gratitude. It's really easy to embrace because it's like getting up in the morning, taking a breath, and the first thing to really think about is, wow, I'm alive. I'm here. I'm here another day. You know, you know, I, I'm in this place of, you know, I wake up every day and my first thing is really just to surrender. So, okay, God, okay, another day. What do you want me to do? How can I serve you? How can I be a better man? How can I be a better physician? How can I be a better Levi Harrison? And I think when we wake up and surrender, it makes everything go really fluidly without any uh, maybe a woulda, coulda, shoulda, oh no. Make a decision, do it. Decide on how you want to make your life and make your life just what you want it to be. Remember, we paint the narrative of our lives. You know, no one's in charge of us. When you say, well, I don't have this, because of such and such, well, nope. Take responsibility. Take ownership for your life. Take ownership for who you are. Take ownership for what you have. Take ownership for your accomplishments or lack thereof. But it's really about you doing what you need to do to do the work to have the best possible life that you want to have. And joy is a way, I believe, that will up-level your life. It will raise you up by just waking up being happy, laughing more, smiling more, being more kind to your neighbors, being more kind to yourself, by not being so hard on yourself about things you've done in the past. It could be everything from past addictions to past relationships to really let it go. And then the other thing I think is so important about increasing joy is this. Are you ready? I think to really, really have bona fide, elevated joy, it's really about this major word, forgiveness. Forgive yourself for all the past stuff. Just let it fall off your shoulders. Love all of you, every wrinkle, every roll of fat, every freckle, every hair patch or lack of hair like I don't have. I want you just to forgive yourself and love 
all of you completely. Why? Two reasons. There's only one of you in the whole universe, just one, so God makes no mistakes. And number two, you take you wherever you go. You don't take me, you don't take your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother. But guess what? Wherever you go, you do take yourself. So take a you that forgives yourself for all the past hurt that you've done to other people, for all the past hurt that you've had done to you. Forgive yourself for all the past hurts that you've done to yourself. Think about it. A lot of times we actually hurt ourselves more than other people. A lot of times we're more hard on ourselves than people are on us. Because I'll tell you, this is California. So when you think that people are thinking about you, trust me, they are not. They're thinking about their bottom line. <laughs> They're not really thinking about you. You might be a part of the equation, but you're not the major variable. They are. So I really want you to go to this place today of, of forgiving yourself for all the past, no matter what it may be, the good, the bad, and the semi-ugly. But I want you now to go to this place of joy. Like, take a breath. And like breathe in joy, like bona fide, childlike, snotty nose happiness. I want you to go to that place. It's a really wonderful place to really say that I love myself and I love all of me with all of my imperfections as well as all of my perfections, all the perfections that I'm working on. I love all of me. I want you to do just that. Love all of you with a sense of joy, with a sense of wonder. Because guess what? There's magic in our lives. There's actual magic. If you embrace yourself and love all of you, there's magic. And that magic comes about when you see that things just click. Things just bam, 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 just fall into place. The right people show up. The right contacts show up. The right relationships show up. The right relationships fall apart. The right people come into your lives. The right people go away. Everything shows up properly. There's magic. I embrace it. I want you to embrace the magic of joy. I think you can do that by thinking about the power and beauty of forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Try that. Just try it. Just say, you know, I forgive myself for what my mom or my dad did or said or what they didn't do or what they didn't say. I forgive my brother or sister. I forgive that uncle who did this or that, that aunt that did this or that. Just forgive them all. Start from a fresh slate, a new narrative of your life today. And I think, consider this. Today, I begin my life with joy. Today, I forgive any and every person that's ever hurt me. I forgive myself for hurting anyone else. I forgive myself for being a bully. I forgive myself for being bullied. I forgive myself for being a bystander when I saw other people being bullied. I forgive all of that. <laughs> I want you to also. This show is about education, empowerment, inspiration, acceptance, and no judgment. Period. That's the Dr. Levi Show. So thank you for listening today. Now I want to tell you about our guest. Well, you know, we meet a lot of people that inspire us to be better versions of ourselves. And I think, of course, that we said before, what's the goal? I believe our number one goal is in life is to be the best possible version of yourself. Now, that's not what other people may think of you because <laughs> that doesn't matter at all. What other people think of us has no impact on our lives. They don't pay our bills. They don't deal with our stress. They don't deal with our relationships. They don't deal with our partners, our wives, our husbands. They don't deal with any of that. They're just looking at you with judgment. So what? Let them judge. Bless them from a distance. Love them from a distance. You know, they, they don't. They don't. They don't have any. They don't have any power unless you give that to them. You know, keep your power to yourself. You know, keep that magic for yourself. Love all of you. When it comes to loving yourself, this gentleman today, our, our guest, Mr. David Hall, he really epitomizes love. He epitomizes focus, involvement in the community. He epitomizes the essence of how can I give back? How can I create leaders? How can I take and mold people into the best possible versions of themselves? He epitomizes this real focused attitude of how can I allow people and remind them that they should believe in themselves, that they should love themselves, that they should reach out to mentors who are doing the things that they want to do so that they can do them. They can give them insights about how to make your life wonderful, 
how to be the best banker you can be, how to be the best musician you can be, how to be the best teacher you can be. Well, David Hall is a man on a mission of giving this nation, giving this world the best possible leaders that there can be. He is the founder of Leaders Path CA. Please go to the website. You can find out more about him and about what his organization is doing. But guess what? We're fortunate to have the one and only, the sensational, the one of a kind, the man that was cut from a mold and they broke the mold after him, Mr. David Hall. Welcome, David. Happy to have you with us. Hey, thank you very much for having us, Dr. Levi. This is, this is fantastic. <coughs> We're really happy that you took time to drive here all those hours to be on our show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. So tell us about yourself, and I want to hear about your, your path from childhood to now to your organization of Leaders Path CA. Wow, that's a, that's a, a long journey. journey right? Yes, it is. It has been a quite a journey. I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Yes. And um, from the East Oakland to uh, Southern California. Yes. And into Huntington Beach and Palos Verdes and different areas. Um, I also uh, been a native of Long Beach, California. Yes. Um, currently a resident in uh, Moreno Valley. Yes. And so, I got to tell everybody, that's like a three plus hour drive. It is, it is, that's is, uh, serious to be with us. Yes. I'm so grateful. To have yes, you with it was us. definitely the, the traffic, but that's part of L.A. as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, so it is. I'm comfortable with that today. Um, it, it took me a little journey to get to here. But yes. as a part of that process, I've learned over the those those this years of yes. uh, traveling that I am uh, a person that just looks at the the travel as a part of the journey. Absolutely, definitely is. Yeah. I want to hear about your childhood. What was childhood like for you? You had you had brothers and sisters? I do. I have uh two sisters. Yes. I'm the oldest of three. Okay. And uh I came from a single family home. My mother raised us uh along with the help of grandparents yes. and uncles and uh aunts. Right. Um, takes then, a village, right? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> right. And then those villages were in Detroit Cal- uh Detroit, Michigan. Yes. Uh, so I, I have various experiences in uh, right in life vif- in life period yeah so the city is uh, not foreign to me I'm very comfortable in the areas yes and um, being brought up in the city is a part of the the journey I think I I, I take uh, with me yes. because it it, it kind of molded me definitely to did. be the kind of the hard hitter the try to go getter yes the try to make it to the next level type person that I am. Absolutely. Sound like your mom was quite a go-getter also because oh, most taking definitely. care of you and two sisters as well as a household to make sure that you all stay on track, that was a job for her. Oh, and, and most definitely. She, um, with the help of, of course, her her network, of yes. course, she took herself from the, the projects in East Oakland yes. to off of uh, welfare, to off of... Uh, any public assistance, right. not to say that that's bad. Oh, no, some need people that. need it, absolutely. We, we needed it, definitely. Yes. Um, but to get to a point where we were in a place where, you know, she was an entrepreneur. Right. You know, and she and uh, my stepfather kind of gave me the the spirit of yes. entrepreneurship. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so it was just some of those things that right. were brought up. <laughs> to mold you. Exactly. And I didn't notice it until much later in life. Right. But yeah. That but was but how wonderful it is for your mom, you know, to go from public assistance oh, yeah. to independence, oh, you know, financial definitely. independence. You know, you know, when, when you're saying that, it made me think about when I was a kid, you know, my, my mom, you know, single parent also, uh, I remember when we were on food stamps. And I remember as a kid having such extraordinary shame about, you know, going, if I wanted candy, you know, give these little $1 stamps that were like pink looking, you know. I remember the $5 ones were like green, and I think the $10 ones were like orange. I remember I remember as my mother would, would be tearing these out, I'll never forget, it was like such an extraordinary, um, wow, such an extraordinary sense of shame that, mm. that I had. Even though I knew she was doing her best, I still felt like, 
wow, you know, I'd be in line. I'd always want to be that last person in the store, you know, to pull them out, pull out my food stamps, give them to them quickly, and like run out. Sometimes I even take the change back because I I felt so embarrassed. So I think it's it's really interesting how those times of lack mold us into the people that we are. Most definitely. I think that's a, a big part of how we get to be that person. Without that struggle, there was no chance for us to even progress. Right. I, I love that statement. Without that struggle, there's no chance for us to progress. Because I think with struggle, it makes us appreciate when we get to a place where we no longer are struggling in that certain specific manner. Right, right. Well, I invite struggle wherever I go. Powerful statement. Yeah, I just think it's just part of... If you don't have it, you just there is no movement. Right, because there's no appreciation for what you do get. It. If you didn't have it, then you wouldn't know what you wanted. Yes. If yes. you didn't go from there to here, that's how it gets. That's how I got started. Right. You know, I, 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 those are powerful statements. Thank you for that. Now, what about your time in the Marine Corps? Because you were in the Marines. Ah, uh, yes. Good, good times. Absolutely. Very good times. Uh, definitely during a time period when the country was. Uh, in combat to mm -hmm. uh, Desert Storm. Yes. And that was uh, my first experience in any type of real uh, where fighting. You fighting. Well, oh, my goodness. You, you would know, I grew up in, this, in, in the city, in the inner right. city, so you get used to a different kind of fighting. Right. That's survival. Remember, that's a survival. Uh, yes. But yes. so now you adapt that skill. To that. In, the, in, the, in, the, in an environment where now you're, you're trained to do a lot of different things. Right. You know? And you were deployed for how long? I was in uh, the Marine Corps deployed from 1988 to 1992. Wow. I was stationed in uh, Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii. Wow. Okay. And um, I traveled to Japan. Yes. Guam, Philippines, Korea. Wow. So Quite I got a, a chance to experience... And what I experienced from my was the the poverty around the world. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness! So it, it touching to the heart where of you can see somebody that just doesn't have anything. Zero. And and what what you have then becomes really a big deal. Yes. Yes. You know. So it does give you a sense of appreciation. Almost you know, you see people. You know, like I always say here in America that some of the poorest poor people here in America have no understanding of how poor it is with respect to other countries that, right. that I've been to where you see people with literally, when we say nothing, they have nothing. Yes. Here at least in this country, if you reach out, even if you have mental disease, there are some places that will give you some help. There is some support, yes. But, but there are other countries where there is, when I say none, there right. is none. Right, that's exactly right. And, and th that experience along with um, being a military person, yes, it gave me such uh, a wide variety of you know emotions, but it also gave me a lot more respect for people. Of course, you know I became a human being. Right. Um, and people of all races, oh yeah, creeds, everything. You know, um, I, you know, I I know it's a this is an interesting experience. Yes. I had I was um, the first time I uh, got to experience being a true American. Yes was in a, another country was that was the first time I ever been called an American and and there was no uh, other connotations with it nothing else. else just an American right and it, it, even though he was condescending about his Americans but I was like first time like you know yes I'm an American right and okay that was that was different for me I had been a whole bunch of other things but right. American had never, never been, been the first, but, exactly but um, I think the military gave me that opportunity to see something like that. Yes. But it also gave me a chance to see the real world, you know. Very was, much so. so. Yeah. So in that time period, I learned a lot of, about leadership, right. uh, honor, respect. Yes. I think those were a big deal. Discipline was another big one. Of course. Too. I'm sure, you know, also being in the Marines, that, that just the camaraderie is Almost. also an understanding of knowing what, what it's like to have family and people that you depend on. For literally for your life. life, right? The brotherhood is if for for me. That's still one of the biggest pieces. Right. Um, getting out of the military was the hardest thing because there was no more uh, brotherhood. Right. There was no when I had a problem, I didn't have anyone to go talk to. You know, I had to try to figure it out by myself. Absolutely. And as a Marine, we are taught from the from Jump Street from from boot camp. Right. 
to to overcome and adapt and right. improvise and make right. the adjustments that right. are necessary to over get to the objective. Absolutely. Um, some days you don't have all of the tools that's necessary so to do, you that. do it, and you do the best you can. Um, when I, uh, while in the process of all of that, man, I I I, I became um, dependent upon alcohol. Yes. Oh, it was a struggle. And this was this was during the military. Yes. This was after. During this was the military. during the military. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you know, I struggle with trying to um, match a civilian mentality sometimes. Yes. With the military mentality. Right. You know, and those are very different, though. Very, very different. Right. Because you're in one voice, you're trying to train and overcome an objective. Right. In another one, you're trying to survive uh, an environment where. You know, the worst thing that could happen is you just get fired. Right. But in Marines, the worst thing that can happen, you can be killed. You can be killed. Right. Or cause the death of or other somebody. people. somebody, yes. Right. Oh, yes. And and that part is scary, very right. scary. It takes a, a different kind of person to bring that that page. Ab- absolutely. So, you know, and then attempting to try to bridge the gap. Yes. I use whatever methods to try to do so and uh, And alcohol was the one that that helped w- which you chose to bridge that gap. It did. It helped it helped do that. Right. And for a period of time that was the solution, not a problem. Right. 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 And uh and in evolved into something that was outside of my control. Right. You know what I mean? When did you get to the point of saying, you know what? Alcohol has a hold on me versus me having a hold on it and being able to let it go. When was that bottom, that abyss, when you hit rock bottom saying, you know what? Guess what? David Hall has to get a hold on this. This is not working for my life, for my family's life. Right. I will be. I will check out of here if I continue down this path. Um, I was um, 95. I got out of the Marine Corps in 92. I was married in 93. Yes. And in 95, um, I, I started the process of recovery. But why? What, 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 was, at what point were you when you, you – because don't forget, you hadn't been drinking just in 95. You no. were drinking before. Oh, yeah, I was so, drinking. I was so drinking. What, was that, what was that point that made you have that, that epiphany, that light bulb moment of – that aha moment of, right. you know what? I'm done. This right. is like, no, I can't, I, can't, I can't put myself or my family through this anymore. It was, um, uh, I would say, the last six months of the was the most uh, devastating to me. I uh, lost a job. Yes. Um, I was being kind of evicted. I yes. I don't know if I would say kind of, but I was. On the verge. Like, yeah, I was close. Right. And I was moving back in with my mother and father-in-law. Right. And uh, the vehicle that I had was uh, not the best of vehicles. Right. And uh, I was actually moving to the Moreno Valley for the first time. Right. And the whole, my whole life was just. Shifting. Oh, the shift was incredible. I mean, I went from, you know, the fast pace, the I'm I'm able to take care of my family to, uh, which, by the way, I have my wife. Yeah, Jana. Jana. She's here today. And uh, my son, Michael. Yes. Uh. We were newly familyed, right? And we were doing all the things that I was, you know, trained to do or kind of conditioned to do, right? And the the ends weren't meeting, right? I didn't. I was I was riding the bike to work right. in the rain, you know. I was I had to do what I had to do, yeah, to su- to survive to, uh, and to help for your family, exactly. But you know, it just was not. And then I'm also a part of this is I'm drinking, right? And so it makes it even harder to try to connect these two, you know. Um, I don't have the perfect job. I'm still making the minimum wage. But right. yet here I am. I'm a, I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Yeah, you gave. You gave your, your and time. And there was nothing like I could I could pull myself. I did all the bootstrap pulling that right. I could do. There was just nothing there. There was no resources. You know, so the resume wasn't. Uh, something I could go and shop it right. I didn't right. know how to shop the resume. Right. This is pre social media and everything. Right. But I didn't have all of those skills. So the recovery periods for losing a job was long term. Right. Right. Unemployment was something I didn't even know about yet. Right. So some of those things were just 
oh my goodness, what do you do now? Well, right. what do you, where, where's the next step? How do you, how you provide for your family? I, and you I got, got a wife and a, and a child. Exactly. And so the stress of it all just was too much. Right. The, um, someone telling you that they, uh, yeah, the whole thing was just too much. overwhelming. Oh, yeah. And then what was that one day? I want to know about that one day that you said, okay, this is the day that I capped the bottle, I put it away, and I get sober and I maintain my sobriety. Well, that, that day was uh, um, after a party of sorts. Right. Um, I'm at home. And this was one of those parties where I said I wasn't going to be this person anymore. Right. I said to my wife at the time, like, yo, like, this is not where we want to be. Right. And help me to really regroup. I said, I'm, we've been here now almost six months. This is just, it's got to be a better way. Right. Got to be. Got to be. And so the next day I show up to, you know, um, some recovery processes, and right. I, I I actually went to my um, my storage unit where I had a garage that had some books, and I grabbed a book, and it just so happened to be a book that talked about recovery. Right. Uh, you know, so it was just the perfect setup for all of that. Right. And so everything just lined up to get did, you when into you, the right when, place. When you are in the process of trying to change your life, right, in surrender. Because it's a part of that. Right. Again, it's the struggle part. Right. If you're not going through it, you can't get to the next level. That's correct. That's correct. So I don't know that I struggled. I mean, surrendered. Mm -hmm. I was beaten into submission. Ooh. So wow. the, my life had gotten to the point where I couldn't go on living like this right. anymore. Right. So it was no surrender. It was a beatdown that yes. occurred yes. emotionally and financially. It was and psychologically. Just, psycho just everything. A beatdown. Yeah, so when you come in and you sit down and you go, man. I'm out. Got nothing. <laughs> There's nothing left. Right. But I ain't had no surrender. Like, right. if I could have, I would have still fought. I would have wow. tried to fight. Wow. Because that's what I was born and bred to do kind right, of right. thing, you know. Yeah. Fight, survive, conquer. <laughs> Always. Right. And, um, yeah, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here. Yes, yes. So that's my, that's, that's the journey that I, I carry today. It's how I got to being the person that I am. It's, it's a serious journey. Oh, man. Now, would you say that uh, do, you, do you feel like programs like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous are helpful? I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Because my oh, father did that, and he, he always said that that helped save his life. Oh, most definitely. I think it's the, the cornerstone of all recovery. Um, prior to Alcoholics Anonymous, I don't think there was a, a, any kind of way to arrest this situation. Right. There were people going to a sane asylums right. because they did not have anything that they can do to help them. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I believe that 12-step uh, processes yes. and uh, particularly Alcoholics Anonymous yes. is definitely one of those places. That if you're looking for the help, that's definitely a place where they'll give it to you. Right. I, I love that statement that Mr. Hall said. That is, if you're looking for a place, if you need help, then... Alcoholics Anonymous is a place of safety, it's a place of refuge, it's a place where you will be embraced to be in recovery, to have maintained sobriety, and do what we can, they will do what they can to really truly help you. Right, wow. I definitely believe that. Wow. That was a very powerful statement. Really well, you is. know, I'm actually, uh, I, I'm now 22 years S sober. Sober. Congratulations. Yeah, that's... 22 years sobriety? Yeah, that's, that's huge. If, if I could turn on applause for you right now, I'd applaud that, that, that man. That, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's huge. It's huge. And it's still, wow. by the grace of God, that I'm I'm standing there, just to be able to be here. And you would agree then, because I know my dad used to say, every day is a day. You just take one day at a time, he'd tell me. Right. Wow. That's exactly the truth. Wow. Yeah, and and I think your your father probably gave you the the institution of believing that one day at a time I can do anything. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. I can see it in your in right. your demeanor as well. Yeah. Uh, it's the I truth. Can, yes. I it's definitely truth. see that. Yeah. Yeah, he he would yeah. always say, Levi, you know, you don't worry about tomorrow. You only have now. That's it. And today you can implement change. Tomorrow maybe. Yesterday you can't change. Yeah. But now you can do something. Right. You know, so that's powerful. I mean, I love the fact that 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 AA really helped to give you a sense of not only sobriety, but but I think as as what you're saying, it gave you a sense of 
the true self that you are, the hero that you are, the man that you are, the great father that you are, the amazing husband that you are. It gave you the sense of, of believing that again and then doing what you can to make yourself better. Right, right. Well, that's it's been my foundation. Right. Without this, there was no that no for me. No that. Yeah, and so everything that I do now, I try to build on th- those those foundation principles. Yes. And today I'm a principled-centered person, and I move in, in an area where not a lot of people are. Absolutely. But I definitely move. Absolutely. And uh, I don't forget where I've come from. Of course not. You know, matter of fact, I kind of, you know, I still have a lot of those same people that I was there with. So right. I, I'm, 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 I applaud them for hanging in my corner with right. me, you right. know. Um, and when hanging in your corner, when you say that, I wanna, I'd like you to talk about how the, the beauty and amazingness of your wife has played in your recovery. Because oh she, she has been an extraordinary, amazing woman to, to love you in spite of. Instead of loving you in spite of, she loved you because of. Right. You know? Well, it, t- it definitely takes a strong woman to be in, um, in an alcoholic's life. Yes. Definitely. It's just, right. I think um, God blesses us with uh, strong women. Yes. Because the people that have, uh, that have her, in, the people like her in their lives, is the reason that they can recover. Because if it, if there was nobody there anymore, there was just the, there was no the reason. To, what was the point to right. push forward? You know? So she was a part of that. This to get to that. Yes. Oh yeah. She, because of her, I wanted to get better. Right. I wanted to make the. You know, I wanted to have her have all the stuff that she has. Right. I wanted her to feel the way that she feels. I wanted yes. her to have a look in her eye that says, this is my husband. Yes. And not be going, oh, this is my husband. Mm, right, right, right. You know, and um, but it was also so that she can, so I could say, this is my wife, and her not feel embarrassed. Correct. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God, I'm with this person? Oh, you know. But it worked out. It's 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 been, we've been uh, married now for 24 years. Yes. So I mean, it's a. And she's seen you through the oh, transition. She's, she's watched well, me. Twenty-two through. years of sobriety out of the twenty-four. She's seen you when you were in that the heart of the 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 the, the beast, the belly of the beast, I should say. She, most definitely. To now, when you resurrect it like the phoenix out of the ashes, Man. she see the new you. She's seen me bumping like a real plane, like where you stop and you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And Scaring the, and the, oh yeah, right, so I'm right, bumping around right, all right, the way through. Right, she right. watched me go through all of it. Right, and still loved and you. Still and me. still stayed with you. Yeah. So right. to, to the fullest. All right. I think that's a it's a I think that's a testament to what this program has done for um my life, but it's also a pr- testament for what it's done in her life. Right. It's also I think a testimony to showing the beauty and strength and fortitude of your wife. Oh, a woman that right. has stood with you never say, "You know what? I'm out of here. Bye." And she you may know, have wanted to, a but few still stay. But she she hung in there, with fought me. it out with you. Oh yeah, she yeah. fought me sometimes right, right. to try to make sure I was right. What but she did what she did what she had to do right. to make because you. she wanted to make sure that not only are we a couple and that right. we are married, but that we are a couple that we love each other. Right, right. And I love my wife. Oh, I'm sure you do. How could you? Oh not? no, I mean, yo, without her, there ain't no me. Right. You know, there's some pieces to the puzzle. Right. But there, this is a major piece to the puzzle. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. No connection to the, without that. How do you feel about how your life has impacted the growth and development of your son, Michael? Wow. Um, <laughs> he is such a um, dynamic young man. Yes. You know, uh, and I say young man only because he's younger than me. Right. But he is a man that I would talk to regularly one-on-one and get just as much wisdom from him. Right. Um, watching him grow up to be that person has right. been my joy. Mm-hmm. That has been a, a, the biggest joy. He's a, a, a great young man. Um, and you can't say enough about your own kids, but uh, watching him go through the, jur- the struggles and right. the journey, and right. uh, but him to find his own path and say, you know what, Pops, this is what I really want to do with my thing, and this is my life, and... Mm-hmm. 
And he also in the belief in the coaching and helping people. That's fantastic. I mean, I think it's just a testament, again, of what's happening in my life. Very much so. You know, all of those pieces to what's happening is that's the development. Right. And I think um, he might say that I helped him, but, you know, that's a father part. Yeah, exactly right, right, right. But, wow, what he's done for me is sometimes. Pretty amazing. Man. Just watching him do it, it's Pretty, I, I, just fantastic. Yeah. You know, now I want I want to go full circle. You know, now how has your life evolved now to Leaders Path, California? Oh. Because that now has taken you from being the mentor for your son to now being the mentor for many other people who look at you as the one that can give them solitude and give them solace in their how to be a better person. Well, you know, as you were talking about recovery, yes, the one of the things that I had to recover is um, employment. Right. I had to learn how to reskill myself and retool myself to fit into what was going on, and I learned that process right here. You know, I learned that process uh, called career development. Right. And I, I I always wanted to be the manager. I wanted to be a, a, a full time. I wanted to be that guy. I wanted yeah. to be able to help people do it. And initially, I didn't know I was even going to be that person. Right. I just showed up to work, did what they told me to do. I followed directions like I was shared, shown to do. Exactly. In recovery. Just keep following directions. Right. You can get there with that. Right. One day right. at a time. One day at a time. And uh, eventually, I got to a point where I was promoted. Right. Promoted in... Um, as a supervisor and then promoted on to a manager. Mm -hmm. How I believe I got there is though truly based on um, having good team people with me. Yeah, and and good team building management skills that you have also. Well, those skills came as a result of, I worked with people who were just like me. They they were real people. They were not uh, trying to be the manager like I wasn't. They weren't trying to do any of the stuff. We were just trying to get, we just competed with each other, right. like wholeheartedly. We said, "Who can get the most calls?" Right, right, right. You right. know, that's where we were. Exactly. And then, I remember being able to get uh, a car, right? My first car, like after I've gotten recovery and after I got a car, right, right. I was able to have a job that I got a car. Exactly. You know, that was just a, that was big. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> And For you and your wife. I, I mean, then my my wife got a car, and I, I'm i like, I'm making both of those payments. Right, right, like, right. Like, wow, right. look at me, I can do this. Right, right, wow. right. I was blown away from just that stuff. <laughs> but uh, as a part of that growth was the kids and uh, my, my, my son being in basketball and me being in – being a part of that as a coaching and right. me being in the supervisory position, I asked my uh, team, what is our team name? Like, let's build something strong. Right. Like, I was really experimental about the whole process. <laughs> right. I had no, uh, like, high expectations. No. I just wanted us to be, like, the best. Right, you were just present. That's it. And I was all the way in with it. So every person that I ever worked with, I believe that's been my – connection with them is that when i'm there just like i'm right now you're present i am right here with you i'm not off looking no no no. i'm i'm here and i'm here with the the message that we can do it yes our experience has shown that anybody that can can overcome these things that's true so let's just look at whatever it is we got as a problem and take care of it let's find out what we can do to solve it and leaders path california does that yes that's a career development company. Yes. And that process is the same thing that I've been doing for years. I take people through and find out what's their strengths, what's their their pluses, and what's minuses. their minuses. Yes. Um, and I don't call, I like to say their weaknesses because I don't think anything is a weakness. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a tool we need to look at so, that we, can, so, we, so we can see what we can do with it. That's true. That's true. And I've taken those, those skills and found out what was transferable right. and movable. And just yeah. did it. Yeah. It's fantastic. And Leaders Path CA, you started that this year, 2017. Right. I, I actually want you guys to come check it out. Um, leaderspathca.com. Um, I started it um, September uh, 15th, 2017. That was the official website launch and 
And ever since then, I've been going at it, trying to make it happen. And you're making it happen. You're making it happen. Yeah, so you really, really are. I, I feel like, uh, and I left, I left a job to do that. Now, I want to know about that. When did you come to that place saying, you know what, okay, today I'm going to leave this great job that I have, mm-hmm. and I'm going to start Leaders Path CA. What was that day like for you and your wife to say, okay, I'm going to leave this to do that? Well, you know, after you talk about it enough times, people finally say either do something or Let's stop talking about it. Stop <laughs> yeah, talking exactly. about it. But exactly. But I, I hadn't, I didn't have the courage at first. Right. You know, I would try it, but I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't jump you know, all you know, in. I wouldn't, do, all right. I wouldn't go all in. All right. But at some point, you get to a point in your job where you say, you know what? I'm doing more against me. Mm-hmm. I'm helping people, but I'm not helping, helping me. And I said, the only way I'm going to really be able to help me do the thing that I really want to do is to strike out on my own. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. I took the risk, you know, after doing some savings right. and stuff like that. But I took the risk. Right. And I've been out here uh, really kind of starting. Really, it was just from scratch. Like, okay, I'm going to start this class. I'm going to go to this and do this. Right. I'm going to do this. I get a, get a website. Get a, right. Get the okay. I'm gonna do all the stuff that's that's necessary, a lot. and I don't have like okay. Here's somebody in front of me showing me how no, to do no. it. You're the guy. Yeah, I'm, I gotta <laughs> go the on there and figure it out. Okay, exactly. what about this? And what about this? Right. And uh, yeah, so that's what that. Happens. The great thing about a ground, uh, I call a grassroots effort like that is you get to know every part of the organization because you are the organization. Right. You know, you are backup. You are the assistant. <laughs> you are the one who, who mans the phones. Right. You are the one who writes the grant, who, right. who talks to the attorneys, who pays for the attorneys. Exactly. It's you. <laughs> and if it don't happen, and I don't, and if I don't do it, it don't it happen. It doesn't get done. Right. You know, it, it, it takes, it, it's a great feeling of ownership, but the heaviness of the responsibility is not a joke. Right. Because it's all on David. Hall, right. Leaders Path CA. That's There's right. Nobody else attached to that. Right. Not your wonderful, beautiful wife. Not your great, amazing son. It's you. It's right. your baby. You gave birth to that. Wow. That sounds so really nice when you say it too. Well, it's truth. It's the it truth. It is. It's, and you know, I've shared that in a, in a probably in one of my coaching sessions yes. was. It's always been a process, and it's like it's like for a mother to give birth. They, they go through nine months of you, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and you know the last part is the right. the most painful. Right, that's the most brutal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. And then they have this wonderful gift, and they right. forget about all the pain. That, right. And I said, this is the same thing. The jump off was such the painful part. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But the struggle has been so. Uh, I mean, I'm all in the unknown. Right, right. I'm doing right now what is unknown to me. Right. I have no experience in right. this. Right. And uh, that I makes it more even, beautiful. I don't even know if I did it right. right. You That's know, okay. it's like I'm like, I'm, oh my goodness, I don't think I'm doing this right. But the beauty of it is that the right will be defined by what is the success of it, right? And the wrong will be defined by I don't want to do that again because that was right. painful. Right. That was either financially painful, emotionally painful, or spiritually painful. But but that doesn't work. Right. But then the right will be it feels good. It feels and good. you help people. Right. Yeah. I I, I applaud you. Wow. Thank you. It takes thank a lot you. of courage, right. you know, because you you know. As you said earlier, you know, you know, you didn't just so some people just put their toe in the right. water. You didn't just put your toe; you just jumped in. You know, cannonball totally in. Right. You know that that takes a lot of kahunas to yeah. do that. You know, it definitely makes it makes it challenging. It does. Way. It does. It gave me a lot of exhilaration though, because right. you you kind of dependent on yourself to Absolutely. do this. Absolutely, I'm never dependent on me to be for me. Right, you got you write the check to yourself. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like right. I, I'm used to taking care of everybody else. Not now, but you got to go out there and do for you this time. Exactly. You know, that's a powerful one. It's a know? powerful, yeah. but you know, God bless the child that has his own. That's you right. You know, that's so right. to actually have the the power and the bravery to say, you know what, I believe in myself enough. I believe that the universe, God, gave me this idea. And that he's given it to me, therefore the footsteps of a righteous man exactly. are ordered by the Lord. That's that right. I'm going to believe that this is going to be okay. That's right. It takes that's a right. lot. It does. You know? But I People have, talk I it. I do. I have faith. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's the cornerstone. The mustard seed of faith. Exactly. With that, that's it. move a mountain. Man, I do a lot. I've done so much right. because of it. Well, I, I mean, it's the people like you and, the, and which, by the way, I 
I applaud you on your Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm very you, grateful. You really have made a well, connection you. with me as well, well my, my wife. Well, thank and you very I'm much. I'm sure you're connecting with your audience even more. Oh, I, I just give them all of me. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, oh, my goodness. It just, the, just that part alone lets me know that there are more people out there doing what I'm yeah. doing. It connects me. Absolutely. I'm not alone anymore. No, I'm no. a part of this group. A whole community. Yeah, exactly. Because the light attracts the light. Right. You know, you're just amazed, Mr. Hall. I, w- I want to remind everyone that David Hall and Leaders Path CA, please go to their website. And I want to, again, I want to give you it. It's, his name is David Hall, and it's Leaders Path, L E A D E R S P A T H C A dot com. Go to their website, look him up, have him come to speak at your events. He's amazing. If you need mentorship, I highly recommend them. I highly recommend him. He's a man of great vision, of great work ethic, great faith, and also he's someone, if you want a role model, he's the guy. And we're fortunate and blessed enough this morning to have him and his wonderful, beautiful, inspiring wife with us today. So I want to thank you, Mr. Hall. You were amazing. Thank you very much. I wish Dr. you the Lee. best. Thank you very much. All right. And please join Leaders Path, a CA, on all of their social media. And we'll have links on my website to them, of course. And I thank you for joining me on all of ours. All of ours is just DrLeviHarrison.com, my social media address. And I want to thank Janet Rodriguez for being with us today, as well as our engineer and owner of UBM, Mr. Tony Sweet. He's a birthday boy soon. His birthday is coming up with a few, uh, within like the next uh, two weeks or so. He'll be a good 22 again. So with that said, I want to thank everyone for joining us, Dr. Levi. I'll see you back here next week. Remember, Friday is World AIDS Day, so be aware of that, be conscious, and be kind to everyone, especially to the veterans, because those women and men are the true heroes of America, whereby we have our sustained freedoms. Take care, everyone. Bye.